of the house of our God. Praise you, the Lord, for the Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Sunday School. And today is a very special day. It's Mother's Day. So I sure hope that you gave your mom a big hug and a kiss and told her Happy Mother's Day. Well, boys and girls, remember in Sunday school that we need to sit up straight, listen, and participate. So boys and girls, join me as we sing some Bible songs together.
singing. Well, we're going to do something different this week. You and I are going to work on memorizing a Bible verse together. Did you hear that song that we just sang about the steps of a good man? Well, those words came from the Bible and they came from Psalm 37, 23. Can you say that with me, boys and girls? Psalm 37, 23. And the words are this, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Psalm 37, 23. Let's work on that verse together, boys and girls. Psalm 37, 23. Now listen to teacher first, and then you'll say it. The steps of a good man. Now it's your turn. Good. The steps of a good man are ordered. Now I'll say it with you this time. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now let's say that all together. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And the last part, boys and girls, are, and he delighteth. Do I happy, boys and girls? Well, when we follow God's steps, then we are happy. So it says, and he delighteth. Say that with me. And he delighteth. And the last words, in his way. So you can do these hand motions. In his way. So boys and girls, let's start from the beginning. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Psalm 37, 23. Now, boys and girls, we want you to do something special with this Bible verse. I want you to work on memorizing Psalm 20, 37, 23 this week at your house. And then have mommy or daddy take a video of you saying your Bible verse. And if you do that during Sunday school next week, We'll show all the videos that the boys and girls send in saying the Bible verse. Will you do that this week, boys and girls? Don't forget to work on Psalm 37, 23 and send us your videos. I can't wait to see them. Boys and girls, last week we started to talk about a man in the Bible. Does anyone remember the name of that man? Yes, it was Joseph. And Joseph, oh, had a very sad story last week. Do you remember his brothers were angry with him? And they sold him to some Midianite merchants who were on their way to Egypt to sell spices and ointment and myrrh. Well, they sold Joseph, and Joseph now had gone on this long journey on the back of a camel, and it was dusty, and it was hot, and it was long, but finally, Joseph arrived in Egypt, and he missed his family, and he missed his home so very much, and when he got to Egypt, he looked around, and whoa! Egypt was very different from his home. There was a large city and there were these huge temples 
that the people had built to worship not the true God, but to worship idols. Joseph had never seen anything like this before. And he didn't understand anyone. They were talking a different language. Oh, Joseph, he was quite sad, but he knew that God was still with him. Well, the merchants were eager to make money off of this slave that they had bought. So they immediately took Joseph to the slave market. Now the slave market was a place where people could go and they could buy a slave to work in their home or in their businesses. So the people that came to the slave market looking for slaves were looking for young, strong, healthy people that would do good work for them. Well, Joseph, he was strong and he was healthy and he was young, so he was just the guy that someone might want to buy. When it didn't take long, boys and girls, before a man named Potiphar bought Joseph as a slave. Now, Potiphar was a very important man. He was in the army of Egypt. His name was Captain Potiphar. And Potiphar had a huge house, and he had many, many slaves or servants that worked for him. And now Joseph became one of his slaves. Well, Joseph was giving many different jobs to do in the house of Potiphar. And he always tried to do his best to please God. So he worked hard and he had a good attitude. And I believe that Joseph prayed to God something like this, boys and girls. Dear Lord, this nation does not worship the true God and they are wicked. Dear Lord, help me to still do right. Help me to not sin. Help me to always do things that please you. Lord, help me to have a good attitude and to always work hard and do my best. I believe Joseph prayed that prayer because do you know what, boys and girls? God did help Joseph. God helped him to work hard and to do his best and to always do right. And God blessed him for that. Well, Potiphar had been watching Joseph and he noticed that Joseph worked hard and always did right and that he was an honest man. So one day, Potiphar calls Joseph over and he says, Joseph, I've been watching you and you're a hard worker and you're honest. He said, I want you to be the overseer over all of my slaves. And on, on top of that, I want you to be in charge of my whole household. Now Potiphar, had a, he was a wealthy man and he had a lot of things. And he put Joseph in charge of all of his things. Now as Joseph continued to work hard and to be honest and good, God blessed Joseph. And now Joseph was head in the house of Potiphar. And not only did God bless Joseph, but God also blessed Potiphar because of Joseph's way, the way he lived. And when God blessed Joseph, he also blessed Potiphar. So Potiphar was even getting more and more wealthy. Well, you know, Satan is God's enemy. And he noticed that Joseph was being so blessed of God. He noticed that other people were seeing the Lord in Joseph's life. And he didn't want to lose not one sinner to the true God. No way. He had to find a way to stop Joseph from being a good testimony in Egypt. So Satan thought of a plan. And he decided he would use Potiphar's wife to tempt Joseph to do wrong. That way he wouldn't have a testimony in Egypt anymore. So Satan used Potiphar's wife. And every day, Joseph came into the house of Potiphar to do his work. And every day, Potiphar's beautiful wife, now she was very beautiful, but she did not love God. And every day she would come to Joseph 
and she would try to get Joseph to do wrong things. And Joseph said to her, look, your ma my master has given me responsible over everything in his house, and he has withheld nothing from me except for you because you are his wife. I cannot do this and sin against my master, and I cannot do this and sin against my God. And he would run from her. And day after day, he tried to stay away from Potiphar's wife because he did not want to be tempted to do wrong. But she wouldn't give up. Every day, she still tried to tempt Joseph to do wrong. Well, one day, boys and girls, Potiphar was away on a trip. And maybe Potiphar's wife thought, this is my chance. So when Joseph was in the house doing his business, she grabbed Joseph by the arm and Joseph immediately jerked free and he ran away from Potiphar's wife. Now, boys and girls, when you're tempted to do wrong, sometimes you need to remember this, that sometimes the best thing to do is to get away. Run away from whatever is tempting you to sin. So that's what Joseph did. He did not want to sin against his master or sin against his God. So when she grabbed him and said to him, you will do what I say, he ran away. But she grabbed his robe and he left behind his robe. <sighs> well, Potiphar's wife was not happy. She did. She wanted Joseph to do what she wanted him to do. And so when she saw that he ran from her and that he left his robe behind, do you know, boys and girls, what Potiphar's wife did? She began to scream, ah, ah, and the servants heard her screaming and they ran to her room and to see what was wrong. And she told them a lie. She said, Joseph's been trying to get me to do wrong things. And sh they believed her. Well, when Potiphar arrived back home from his trip, she went to him immediately and told him the same lie. She said to him, that Hebrew slave that you thought was so good and you put in charge of your whole household, He's been trying to get me to do wrong things. And when I refused, he, for, he ran and forgot his robe. This is proof. Joseph is a bad man. Oh, Potiphar did not like that. He was furious with Joseph. He believed his wife's lie. And he threw Joseph into prison. Oh no, poor Joseph. He didn't do anything wrong and now he's in prison. And maybe he thought to himself, here I go. I'm trying to do right all the time. I'm trying to obey God and I'm trying to make right decisions and look where it got me in jail. I should have just done what she said and sinned against God. Do you think he said that, boys and girls? No, he didn't say that because he trusted God. He didn't know why all these bad things were happening to him. He didn't understand what God was doing, but he trusted God and he knew God was in control. So maybe this is what he thought in the jail. Hmm, God must have a job for me to do here in this jail. And so he continued to trust God and to have a very good attitude. And it wasn't too long, boys and girls, that even the jailer, the man in charge of the jail, he noticed that Joseph had a very good attitude and that he was honest and that he did right. And so he called Joseph over and he told Joseph, I'm going to put you in charge of all the prisoners. <gasps> Do you know even in jail, boys and girls, 
Joseph's testimony was seen by others, and he was promoted in jail. So boys and girls, this is something to learn, that when you do right and you please God, people notice, and it can do great things for you, and God can bless you. So he was blessing Joseph even in the jail. So now Joseph was in charge of all the prisoners. Well, shortly after Joseph was put in the prison, two new prisoners came. And because Joseph was very nice, he quickly became friends with these two prisoners. Well, in Egypt, boys and girls, they don't have a president like we do, and they don't have a king, but they have what is called Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was kind of like the president or the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh had a butler. Now, a butler is somebody who does whatever the king wants. The king may say, go get me my slippers, and the butler would bring him his slippers. Or he may say, go get me a drink, and the butler would get him a drink. So the butler did whatever the pharaoh needed done. And the other prisoner was the baker. He was Pharaoh's baker, so he made all of Pharaoh's food for him. So the baker and the butler were put into prison, and Joseph became their friends. Well, one morning, when Joseph was walking around checking on all of the prisoners, he noticed that the butler and the baker looked kind of sad and worried. And he asked them, fellas, why do you look so downhearted today? And they told him, well, we both had dreams and we don't know what they mean. <coughs> and Joseph told them, only God is in the business of telling what dreams mean. He said, but I serve the true God. So maybe if you tell me your dreams, maybe he will reveal to me what your dreams mean. So the butler went first. The butler said, in my dream, I saw a vine growing up. And the vine had three branches. And it seemed that those branches budded and blossomed with beautiful, juicy grapes. And in my hand, I saw Pharaoh's cup. And I took those grapes and I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and I gave the cup to Pharaoh. Well, Joseph smiled and God had revealed to him what the dream meant. So he said, Butler, this is what God says your dream means. In three days, remember there were three branches in the dream. He says that in three days, you'll be out of the prison and you'll get your old job back. You'll again be Pharaoh's butler. Well, this was good news for the butler. He liked what he heard. And so Joseph told him, well, as you're going in and out talking to Pharaoh and serving Pharaoh, will you remember me? Will you remember that I am in here and that I'm innocent? I was put in prison unjustly. I did nothing wrong. Will you remember me and tell Pharaoh and have ask Pharaoh if he will have me released from prison? Will you? And the butler said, of course I'll remember you. I'm so thankful for all you've done for me. I sure will tell Pharaoh. Well, then it was the baker's turn. And the baker told his dream. In his dream, he had three baskets on his head. And in the top basket, there were all sorts of breads and rolls for the Pharaoh to eat. But then some birds came and ate up all the bread. Hmm, Joseph kind of frowned a little. And God revealed to him what the baker's dream meant. In three days, he said, you'll be released from prison, but you'll be executed. Oh, this wasn't such good news for the baker, was it, boys and girls? And things happened just as God had revealed them to Joseph. In three days, the, the butler got out of jail and got his job back. 
and the baker got out of jail and he was executed. Oh, well, Joseph stayed there in the prison and he wondered, will the butler remember me? Will he remember to talk to Pharaoh for me? And day after day, after day, after day, the butler went in to serve the Pharaoh, but he forgot all about Joseph. One month went by, two months went by, and Joseph was still in prison. Now, the butler can be kind of like us boys and girls. Sometimes we say, thank you, like the butler said thank you to Joseph, but then he didn't do anything to show that he was thankful. If he was really thankful, then he would have gone to Pharaoh and kept his promise to Joseph and told the Pharaoh, please let him go, he's innocent. But he forgot Joseph. We shouldn't be like that, boys and girls. Think about today, this special day, Mother's Day. Sometimes we tell mom, mommy, I love you so much but then we don't obey her and we aren't kind to her. Does that show mommy that we love her? No, it doesn't boys and girls. So if we say something, we should mean our words. If we tell mommy, I love you mommy, then we should show our love by doing things like obeying and being kind. And it also, it goes for saying, I'm sorry. Oh, mom, I'm sorry that I disobeyed. But then you still disobey and do the same thing that you said sorry for does not show mommy or daddy that you are really sorry. So we should keep our word. When we say thank you, we should show that we're thankful. When we say, I love you, we should show that we love those people that we say, I love you too. And if we're sorry, we should prove it by stopping to doing whatever it is that disobeys our parents. So on Mother's Day, when you tell your mommy today, mommy, you're the best mommy. I love you so much. You should do more than just tell mommy you love her. You should show her you love her by obeying and being kind. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Now, Joseph was probably pretty sad that he was forgotten by the butler, but he still trusted God and he didn't understand what was going on, <clears throat> but God was working in his heart. Do you know sometimes God allows bad things to happen to us because it's making us stronger, not on the outside, but on the inside. And Joseph was learning to trust God and to love God with his whole heart. And he was getting stronger and stronger. And he was having a big testimony for God wherever he went, whether he was a slave in Potiphar's house or he was a prisoner in the prison. His testimony showed that he loved God and that he trusted God. And so all throughout the story of Joseph, we hear the words, and the Lord was with Joseph. And Joseph was waiting patiently to see what God would do next with his life. So join us next week, boys and girls, to see what happens to Jake Joseph. Does he stay in jail? What's gonna happen? Will the baker remember him? I don't know, so you'll have to come back next week to see. And don't forget, boys and girls, we want to see those videos of you saying your Bible verse, Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way psalm 37 23 you can send your video to miss jennifer or to brother caleb 
or to Pastor Greg. And we will have your video on our next week's Sunday School video. See you next week, boys and girls.